Game Ranks presents the top 10 upcoming games of the first half of 2016. These are our most anticipated games that we're looking forward to playing in the first half of 2016, and there's a lot. So let's get started off with number 10. Firewatch looks like a very unique game that looks very cool and has a bit of an unconventional premise. You play as a park ranger in a first person perspective sitting atop a tower looking for smoke and evidence of forest fires. You're completely alone and isolated and your lifeline is one person you can talk to over the radio. There's a lot of deep story stuff going on here told subtly, especially the fact that you the main character recently underwent a divorce. The thing is is that there are creepy things afoot in the forest and you have to figure it out. The premise of this game has been pretty somewhat vague up until the release of the game but we're really Really looking forward to it because we don't exactly know what to say about it, but it looks really cool. It looks like both a fun, beautiful, exploratory type first person game and also some sort of creepy weird mystery, so we can't wait to get our hands on it. And at number 9 we have Mirror's Edge Catalyst. This isn't necessarily a prequel, a sequel, or a reboot. It's just kind of another Mirror's Edge game. In Mirror's Edge Catalyst, once again, you get to play as Faith, and this time around there's more traversal, there's an open city to explore, and more takedown moves, especially the fact that this time around they got rid of being able to use guns at all. Which I think is kind of cool because it really emphasizes the fact that you're just fast and running and disarming people and trying to escape. That's really what the whole idea of the game is about. It looks gorgeous and really cool. Look, the first Mirror's Edge Edge was actually a little bit of a sleeper hit for some people, and if this is just a refinement and an improvement on the first game, we're all for it. And at number 8 we have Far Cry Primal, a game that really popped up as somewhat of a surprise at the end of 2015, but it looks so freaking cool. Far Cry Primal is a Far Cry game where you're a prehistoric character. You've got a spear, you hunt animals, and you club people and cavemen and other animals to death. It's got a somewhat simple premise, and you might think it's really just kind of like a mod or a reskin of Far Cry 4, but this game looks pretty complex. There's just this whole new look and style and just a lot of blood and gore and nature, and it seems like you'll actually be able to control some animals to your advantage. It actually looks really intense and I think it was a good idea for them to kind of change up the Far Cry formula so people don't really get sick of it and I know I'm not bored of the series yet because I'm really looking forward to sinking my teeth into this one <laughs> to see what I did there and at number seven we have Total War Warhammer for the PC this is a turn-based strategy RTS that has the gameplay of the Total War series with the mythology and look and everything else of the Warhammer series and that's really cool general fans of Warhammer are probably really pumped for this because classic Warhammer doesn't really get the love it deserves anymore Personally, I think Total War is a perfect style game to really set Warhammer in, and I'm looking forward to waging battle with four playable Warhammer-themed factions. And at number 6 we have Dark Souls 3. From Software has really been on a roll after Bloodborne, following it right up with Dark Souls 3 and we can't wait. Dark Souls 3 looks absolutely incredible, not just from a new art design and graphical standpoint, but just gameplay. Look at those bosses, look at those enemy designs. This time around there's a lot of new additions to the gameplay, including two different types of Estus flasks, faster and more fluid movements somewhat inspired by Bloodborne. There's also a combat feature called Ready Stance that allows you to deal more damage. And there's gravestones that pop up throughout the game that not only give you hints submitted by other players, but also also more lore into the game's story. I'm a little late to the party with Souls-style games, I only just got hooked with Bloodborne, but now I am frothing at the mouth for Dark Souls 3. And at number 5 we have Street Fighter 5. This one, curiously enough, is releasing only for PS4 and PC. Street Fighter 5 is going to feature a much better designed online experience and 4 new characters. It looks absolutely gorgeous, faster than ever, and we're really hoping that the hardcore fans of the series are going to like this one. Because there is just a huge and hardcore Street Fighter following, and they're probably pretty picky, so this game has a lot to live up to. And at number 4 we have Quantum Break, releasing for Xbox One. This exclusive has been long in the making by the makers of Remedy Games, the guys who made Alan Wake, and the people who created Max Payne. This game has undergone such a long development cycle, and it, most recently it seems to really have gotten a sense of an identity with a new main character being played by Sean Ashmore, who you might know as Iceman from the X-Men series. And it looks pretty cool, it's an action-adventure third-person shooter game where you run around, where you have the ability to manipulate and freeze time. The combat looks pretty cool, a little bit run-of-the-mill, but those powers really seem to shake it up and they're handled pretty well. Time will tell in this one, you never know, but thankfully we're finally going to find out in April. And at number 3 we have XCOM 2. XCOM 2 is releasing for the PC and it looks super awesome. Have you guys seen the trailers for this game? Once again you're the commander of a military organization fighting off invading aliens. The look of this game looks completely badass with a bunch of new alien enemy types as well as a bunch of cool new player soldier classes. Another HQ you can build up as well as a mobile HQ and a loot system. You can get loot from fallen enemies and allies. There's also, for the first time ever in an XCOM game, a new secondary side quests mode that seems really 
really promising and promises to hopefully keep players even more busy. And I'm all about that because I can play XCOM forever. And at number two, we have The Division. Now, The Division is pretty up there with being 50-50. People have been burned before a lot by Ubisoft. And The Division comes along with a lot of hype and a lot of anticipation and a lot of delays. This semi-open world online third-person shooter looks really cool and is very ambitious. It takes a lot of RPG and MMO elements from stuff like Destiny, but it puts it in a realistic, gritty third-person shooter in a New York City that looks pretty damn realistic after it's been ravaged by a plague. And I'm really, really hoping this one is good guys. I've been excited for this for a while but I'm trying not to let the hype get the best of me because like I said I have been burned before but it just looks so damn cool. It's been delayed over and over again but we'll finally find out how it is in March. And at number one we have bum, 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 Un Uncharted 4, A Thief's End is what I'm trying to say. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End is called A Thief's End. They're teasing it to be the end of Nathan Drake's story, and we're really excited to see what happens to this beloved character. Not only that, the game just looks insanely awesome. Have you seen the gameplay demos for this? It looks like more Uncharted action that we know and love, especially now that they've introduced a new character, Nathan Drake's brother. Is he going to turn out to betray us? Who knows? That seems to be the likely thing that happens to Drake, but time will tell. I gotta say, not only is Uncharted 4 probably the most anticipated PlayStation 4 game right now, it's probably just up there with one of the most anticipated games, at least for the Game Ranks team. That being said though, there are a lot more games releasing that we couldn't cram onto a top 10 list, including the weirdly episodic Hitman, that still looks kinda good, the triumphant return of Star Fox with Star Fox Zero, Jonathan Blow's The Witness, Homeworld, Deserts of Karak, Battleborn, the first person space game Adrift, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2, which had a promising beta, and Fire Emblem Fates. There are a lot of games releasing in the first half of 2016, and like I said, these are our most anticipated. But what we really want to hear are your most anticipated. Leave us a top five in the comments below. Let's talk about these games. What are you looking forward to playing the most? If you did have a good time watching this video, maybe we taught you about a new game coming out, click the like button, because that can really help us out. Subscribing if you're new is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.